Chairwoman Waters, Ranking Member McHenry, and other members of the committee, thank you for the opportunity to testify today to discuss the extraordinary challenges our nation is facing and the steps we're taking to address them. We meet as the pandemic continues to cause tremendous hardship, taking lives and livelihoods both at home and around the world. This is a global public health crisis, and we remain grateful to our healthcare professionals for delivering the most important response and to our essential workers who help us meet our daily needs. These dedicated people put themselves at risk day after day in service to others and to our country. Beginning in March, <clears throat> the virus and the forceful measures taken to control its spread induced a sharp decline in economic activity and a surge in job losses. As the economy reopens, incoming data are beginning to reflect a resumption of economic activity. Many businesses are opening their doors, hiring is picking up, and spending is increasing. The economy has entered an important new phase and done so sooner than expected. While this bounce back in economic activity is welcome, it also presents new challenges, notably the need to keep the virus in check. Uh, while recent economic data offer some positive signs, we're keeping in mind that more than 20 million Americans have lost their jobs and that the pain has not been evenly spread. The rise in joblessness has been especially severe for lower wage workers, for women, and for African Americans and Hispanics. This reversal of economic fortune has caused a level of pain that's hard to capture in words as lives are upended amid great uncertainty about the future. The path forward for the economy remains extraordinarily uncertain and will depend in large part on our success in containing the virus. A full recovery is unlikely to occur until people are confident that it's safe to engage in a broad range of activities. The path forward will also depend on policy actions taken at all levels of government to provide relief and support the recovery for as long as needed. The Federal Reserve is strongly committed to using our tools to do whatever we can for as long as it takes to provide some relief and stability to ensure that the recovery will be as strong as possible and to limit lasting damage to the economy. After lowering the federal funds rate to essentially zero, our actions so far fall into four categories. Stabilizing Treasury and agency MBS markets, money market and liquidity, liquidity and funding measures, direct efforts to support the flow of credit in the economy, and targeted regulatory measures to support those efforts. So far, we've created 11 facilities under Section 13.3 of the Federal Reserve Act to support liquidity, funding, and the flow of credit to households and businesses and state and local governments. Without access to credit, families could be forced to cut back on necessities or even lose their homes. Businesses could be forced to downsize or close, resulting in further losses of jobs and incomes and worsening the downturn. Our emergency lending facilities have all been undertaken with the approval of the Treasury Secretary, and many are supported by funding from the CARES Act. Their status and effects are discussed in greater length in my written statement, which I've provided to the committee. The Fed will continue to use these powers forcefully, proactively, and aggressively until we're confident that the nation is solidly on the road to recovery. When the time comes, after the crisis is passed, we will put these emergency tools back in the toolbox. I would stress that these are lending powers, not spending powers. I will also note that we design our facilities to work for broad ranges of businesses and municipalities. We do not target particular firms or industries. Elected officials have the power to tax and spend and to make decisions about where to grant to where to direct such targeted relief. The CARES Act and other legislation provide direct help to people, businesses, and communities. This direct support is making a critical difference not just in helping families and businesses in a time of need, but also in limiting long-lasting damage to our economy. Public faith in our operations depends on transparency. At the Fed, we're committed to that transparency, particularly in deploying our emergency powers. Thank you. I look forward to our questions.